we're going to, ha going to go ahead and call the City Council Redevelopment Agency um, City Council meeting of Monday, February 28th, 2005 to order. If uh, you could take a moment and uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd appreciate it. Item two on our agenda this evening is changes to the order of the agenda. Is there any changes from my fellow council members? Does staff have any changes? No, Madam Mayor. Anyone from the public? Okay. Next item, 3A, under council reports, is a status report on the recruitment of the new city manager. And I would ask our human resources director, Andrew Greenberg, to uh, give us a quick update on the status of our recruiting process. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Andrew, um, could you speak up a little oh, bit? It's kind of hard to hear you. You just have to talk directly into the mic. Can you hear me okay now? Yes. I'm just wondering if it's on. It is on. You don't on. project okay. as well. Good. I have a soft voice. I'll try to, to um, project a bit better. Um, just to remind you, we had sent out an RFP to four vendors, and we had a uh, due date of February 25th, which was last Friday. All four of them responded, and I'm now going over those proposals. Um, the council had asked that we get an idea as to about how long this recruitment would take. And in looking at all four proposals, they're pretty darn close in line, and it looks like about 16 weeks from the time we start to the point at which we could actually make a hire. But then you have to add another three to four weeks for whoever you hire uh, for the personal situation, if it's somebody from um, another city making arrangements, et cetera. So I would say maybe 19 to 20 weeks on the outside. So we're looking at four to six months. Yeah. Yeah, I projected it, and we're talking about roughly second week in July. Okay. And um, in terms of the, the cost, do you have any idea in terms of range? I do. We're talking about probably between twenty four to twenty six thousand dollars, and that includes reimbursed expenses. The proposals all came in at about eighteen to nineteen thousand dollars, and then there's um, reimbursed expenses. So, in terms of the process, what are the next steps? Well, the next step will be that I'll review and make a selection, and then um, I will contact the mayor, and we'll go from there. It'll be at that point. Um, the process will be unfolding, and we'll have to talk about what we want to do. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think we'll probably be doing that in the next couple of days. I'm hoping to be able to really focus on that tomorrow. Okay. Does anyone have uh, questions? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, um, thank you. Other council reports? I'll start with Tom. I do have a few. Um, let me start with the uh, CPAG. Uh, Group, the Congestion Management and Air Quality Committee, we call that CMAC. Uh, Fletcher and I, we had a meeting this afternoon and uh, talked about uh, the application of funds that will be coming from uh, the uh, recent approval in the $4 per year vehicle license fee. And uh, the, the funds are, are to be allocated both uh, to the county and to the cities <coughs> and to new projects and to old. So there's a wide variety of uh, applications, and the uh, CK board will be reviewing this at their next meeting and, and probably making a decision on it. Then uh, switching to the SBSA, uh, Jim Buley is retiring after his term uh, with the water treatment plants. He's been there since it started. So he'll be retiring the middle part of uh, 2006. We have a recruitment starting there as well. And we'll be uh, beginning to look at candidates uh, toward the summer and hopefully have someone on board by, uh, by the end of the year. So that's going to be a, a very interesting process. There are three candidates uh, at SBSA that are interested, and uh, we will take this to the broad market and look around and, and find the best Those are internal candidates? For the job. Pardon me? Those are internal candidates? I'm sorry? You internal. said those are internal candidates? You had three candidates? Internal, yes. Yeah. Um, and then finally, I attended the parks meeting, the parks for the future, and that's also reaching a, a very high interesting, uh, uh, high energy level and a very interesting process. Uh, critical areas are uh, how do we raise the money, 
there's two possibilities. One's a parcel tax and one's an increase in sales tax. And uh, those two are now being deliberated and uh, there will be a recommendation uh, soon, presumably. Uh, and then the important issue of how it gets the money gets spent. Uh, initially on the table is a 50-50 split between the county parks and all city parks. And then how will cities share in the amount for parks and is that on the basis of park land or people or a combination? And that's all to be decided. So uh, they're not ready for prime time yet in terms of bringing it uh, out into the, uh, the public uh, sphere, but it won't be too long and there will be recommendations that uh, will be advanced to the county. So those, uh, those three committees are alive and well. Thank you, Tom. Matt? Thank you. Um, two things to report. Uh, one is that I'm serving on, of course, as you know, the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee of CCAG. And we recently went through a process. Uh, we had 27 applications for grant funding this year. Um, it's a pretty long, drawn-out process of going and seeing all the projects and so forth. And I, I was actually a little dismayed because um, uh, our, as you know, our city engineers uh, have been out ill. And so when, when we went out on the Saturday to look at the projects, we did not come to Belmont or to San Carlos uh, because of that situation. And, and I thought, oh, no, this is going to hurt us because it's really good to go see the projects. And um, then the, the night that we did the uh, presentations and the, the board members uh, gave their scores on the projects, um, well, the, the night that we gave the presentations, uh, Don Gilbert came and did a, a wonderful job of doing a presentation for us. And then uh, at our last meeting, we actually voted and scored the projects. And I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled that San Carlos scored the highest out of 27 projects with our application for bike paths. I think they're on uh, Britain, the Alameda, and uh, a couple other places we've got some projects going on. Uh, we had this, a score of 88, and uh, like I say, that was the highest of all the, the projects. And so I just wanted to really, first I want to commend Tom because I know he, he worked before I did. He served on BPAC <coughs> in advance of me and um, worked really hard to uh, represent San Carlos on that. And then I know Tom worked hard to get a BPAC going for us. I wanted to commend Mike because I know he, uh, when we were talking about it, he dug his feet in a little bit and said, I don't know, is this necessary? And, and uh, in, in the end, he was behind it. And so um, I think it's great that here we've got this freshman BPAC we put in a project and uh, we have the top project. Now that doesn't guarantee funding by any means, but it sure looks so it good. Sounds good it Wait, sounds very good. Now staff put together <laughs> the application for that? Uh, well, it was, a, it was a combination of our BPAC made the yes. recommendations yes. and worked with staff to put together the application, yes. It, so I think we should, we should recognize uh, staff as well for well, well, obviously like putting though, together. Matt, it, it's really the process, though, those of you remember when Jeff Klein was coming here, it is a very fair process. And uh, we do score, uh, sitting there for t almost 11 years now, watching the process, we, we do come out very well. We get more than our share of money out of CCAG, be it bikes, transportation, or whatever. But it is a fair process. So uh, not visiting the sites really kind of immaterial it's just how you make that process and the score is real fair it's mm -hmm. very it's a fair process well it it does affect the scoring in the sense that i, I know well, as one who does yeah them. when you see it it really makes an impression on you and you get to see the the validity of the project so it can affect how, how you look at it but nonetheless i was <coughs> very proud <laughs> um, the second thing is i serve on the airport land use committee and uh this is for the San Carlos Airport. Uh, well, it's for all the airports in the county. Oh, but okay. um, we look, one of the airports we're looking at is San Carlos. And I brought this tonight because one of the things we're looking at is redefining what's known as the abrogation easement. Um, and this was on our agenda at the last meeting. And the idea is to increase the size of the abrogation easement to match what's called the AIA, the Airport Influence Area. Um, and Barbara Pierce, who's a council member from Redwood City, had some issues with this and uh, challenged it. And so partly because it, it impacts Redwood Cities and Redwood Cities downtown. Um, and so what we did is we created a subcommittee to look at this issue. And it's Barbara Pierce, myself, uh, and Mark Church. 
and we'll be working with Dave Carboni. Now, the reason I bring this up tonight is because I want to make staff aware of it and our, our planning director, um, because I don't feel uh, fully prepared, if you will, to go into an ad hoc committee meeting and make recommendations on behalf of our whole city on this issue. And so I'm asking our staff to contact Dave Carboni at the airport uh, land use office and get some background material and also if this if the city staff could make a recommendation on a position we may want to take as a city on this issue uh, I know Sam Carr has has uh, given some some advice on it uh, and some other uh, folks might as well including San Carlos residents might want to look into it if they're interested okay that's it thank you Don uh, just a couple of things uh, Vice Mayor Grocott and I continue to meet actually fairly regularly on a uh, building department ad hoc. Uh, let's work with the situation. Let's try to uh, make everything a little more user friendly sort of a committee. And I think we continue to make good progress there. Uh, we meet with Mr. Garvey, we meet with Jack Ayala, who's our building department head. And, and Liz, uh, Liz Cullinan, our planning director has been involved uh, lately. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of reviewing a whole bunch of things. The end goal of which is to come up with uh, you know, a good summary of what our review has been about. We'll bring this back to the council at a later date and get some more specific input with our recommendations, but we are making pretty good progress on that. Uh, I think you'd agree, Matt, right? Yeah, I totally. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lastly, and I, I was had way too much on my mind last council meeting, but I would like to report on an absolutely outstanding uh, sixth annual week of the family that we had this year. Uh, the co-chairs, again, were Joyce Strauss and John Volkert. And the events were all well attended. Uh, there was great support from the schools, from, the, from our staff, from everybody involved. The, the results are uh, you know, far more than what is even measurable, we believe, in terms of creating community and creating the type of community specifically that I think we can all be proud of. And everyone uh, that I bumped into thought that everything was just a raging success this year. Except I think our re re count on the sit on the uh, chili cook-off. I think we got yeah. we got aced. <laughs> well, you know, the firemen cook a mean chili. Well, the police so is here. I want some support next year from the police department. <laughs> Mike, do you have anything? I have to one report? one uh, one item, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, earlier before today's meeting, we had a uh, um, preliminary meeting with two consultants, and uh, this body has charged uh, Matt and I with the responsibility of coming back with a recommendation, and we did. We came back recommending that uh, this body interview uh, two of the candidates who we felt would provide us more than what I call the scale down project that, that had originally been envisioned. Uh, I know Matt and I both call, we're not calling this visioning. Uh, we're not calling this visioning, even though we've titled it the same, but it is uh, really a look to the future. And I'd like to uh, um, ask my, can my fellow council members to um, let us select an individual, one of the two candidates we interviewed today and then push it back to uh, staff to negotiate with uh, the successful party and decide and let's get on with the process. Okay. Do we need a, a formal vote or you would just like well, direction? Well, I, mean, I mean, we can throw it open here if you want for, uh, for an item for a vote. Does anybody have any, uh, oh, wait, 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 sorry. Bob's, let the city attorney weigh in first. Yeah, as opposed to taking action since it's not actually on the agenda, why don't Give direction it to is staff. On the agenda. Wait, well, the interviewing was yeah. on the agenda, but not for taking action by the council. On that. I want to give some direction to staff as to who we should negotiate. To do that. So we could give direction to staff to solicit um, an RFP, or I'm sorry, solicit a contract from. Okay. Or we could give direction to our council subcommittee to work with staff to solicit a uh, contract to bring back for um, review and possible consideration. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll leave that to the subcommittee, I would imagine. Tom, did you want to weigh in on this? Yeah, not having uh, heard from the committees or been a part of the selection process, I did hear a lot about visioning. And if we're not visioning, what are we doing? And what are we hiring these folks to do if there's not vision? Um, and I'm a little unclear about about the direction and, and the you know the the, the, uh, the instruction. Tom, I think it was just a selection of a word, um, 
Matt and I had, had received input from private citizens saying, we already went through this visioning process. We're saying this is not the visioning process that went through for the downtown. This is not the visioning process we went through the, South for the Laurel. Uh, South, South Laurel. South Laurel. Mm -hmm. uh, it is visioning, but strategic development and strategic planning for the future. And, it, and I think you saw both of these uh, presentations tonight, which mm -hmm. were kind of amended than what we saw the first time through. But um, I mean, I'll just kind of kick it open, saying I, I, I feel comfortable with either one. But we're kind of looking for direction from from you. That's that's why uh, I went back and looked at my own scorecards uh, from the first night um, and, and had a. a and, it, and if it means anything, uh, Inga had mentioned about the subcommittee choosing. Uh, Mike and I uh, chatted a little bit uh, between the uh, interviews and, and this meeting. And uh, I chose one, and he chose the other. So, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then back to an observation. Uh, I thought they were both uh, did very well, and made excellent presentations. Um, uh, and if I'm thinking, as you all think about visioning, what visioning really is, um, although we don't call it visioning, but, you know, with what direction is the community going? Uh, it seems to me that uh, MIG probably is a stronger candidate because of their experience uh, in, uh, with other communities. Uh, and I think if I had to pick one or the other, I would select MIG. Okay. Don, do you want to weigh in? Uh, sure. Um, I both thought, or I thought that both of the firms were very professional, uh, very thorough in their presentations, even though they were limited. Um, in terms of the background and in terms of what they presented tonight that I could relate to, uh, I, I tend to agree with Tom. I think that MIG, uh, I mean, I, I know what the process is going to be about, and it's, it's involving people. And I mean, I've seen it a bunch of different times in different areas. So I think that both could do a, a very, very adequate job. Um, I just had a little bit, I don't know, uh, your intuition or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that I thought that MIG might be a little bit better fit, you know, fit for what we're about here, but that doesn't at all rule out, uh, you know, the applied development economics firm either, because I think they were very good. Well, I guess uh, I'll weigh in. I actually, um, like my colleagues, felt that either um, either consulting firm could do <coughs> a probably a fairly good job at uh, strategic planning. Um, two observations. I actually liked the process described by Applied Development Economics over the process described by MIG. And the reason being is, is that it was, it spent more time on actual issue identification design and public input um, than uh, the MIG process looked to do. Also, um, I think knowing San Carlos and, and the speed at which things move through this, I think nine months is probably more appropriate than six months. I mean, if we're talking about coming up with a strategic plan for the next 10, 15 years, um, I don't want to be constrained to six months, let's hurry up and do this because that's what we've got in the budget. Um, and then the other thing that I liked um, about Applied Development Economics was their recognition uh, that economic development was part of the overall picture because you, you can't just set this vision and say, you know what, if we had the money, we sh should, um, you know, have additional parklands. If we had the money, we should have um, El Camino be a Grand Boulevard without the recognition that you need to have the economic development, which is either going to come from property taxes or sales tax revenue increases because the state keeps taking away any other money. So that's, I, I liked that um, it was more, a more comprehensive um, perspective, I think, rather than this visioning. And, and I think it, it really is, from, from my perspective, we need to come up with a strategic plan. How do, you know, where is it that we as a city should go, want to go from a community base, as well as how are we going to get there from an economic development perspective? And, you know, I, I did ask the question specifically of MIG, and I didn't really hear the response I expected to hear it when it came back in terms of economic development and um, sort of how the economic development picture feeds into the health of, um, of a city in terms of fiscal programs. 
So that was um, that was my take on it. Okay, I guess we got directions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we'll convene uh, with uh, uh, with Jeff and get back to both of the parties. Um, and with with the council's um, approval, we'd like to get on this as quickly as possible. We're not going to wait because I know both the parties are here tonight. Okay. And um, I think we'll try to come back to you with an agendized item and get it done, voted on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. Any other council reports? I didn't have any council reports uh, other than the one about Mike Garvey. Um, under 4A, uh, we I have a plaque, actually. I don't believe Steve Kaufman is here in the audience. Um, Steve Kaufman was actually a member of our Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee from 2003-2004. And um, we generally recognize people who have served on our uh, city boards and commissions with a plaque um, on their retirement. So, Christine, if you could make sure that Steve gets that plaque, that would be wonderful. And um, Steve, if you're watching from home, we certainly appreciated your time and effort spent on that commission. Um, 4B actually is a proclamation um, to two citizens, and I don't believe that they're here either. We had, um, so we're gonna put this on a future agenda. We had actually two citizens, my understanding, um, was that they were involved in a uh, call at Walgreens during a, uh, a burglary that was there. And so they were very heroic in that. So next meeting, hopefully they'll get on the agenda. And then the last is, um, we have a, a young woman in our community actually who has been working tirelessly for the rights for the um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. And I don't see Marina here either. But um, she's, I do have a proclamation here for her. She's the daughter of uh, two women that live here in San Carlos. She's grown up here. She's attended local schools. And she continues to um, speak out about the rights of, uh, of all individuals, not just uh, uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. So um, we'll make sure that she gets this proclamation as well. Next item is public comment. This is a... Um, 10 minute maximum period of time at this point that is uh, for persons who wish to address the city council on an item that's not on our posted agenda and each speaker will be limited to two minutes. Is there anyone here from the public that wishes to speak during public comment? Matt, do you wanna um, go down to the podium since you're speaking as public comment? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. That's all right. Um, I just wanted to make a, a brief statement at the last city council meeting um, and also last week, I received comments, uh, one instance respectively, from constituents uh, regarding my press release uh, about Mr. Garvey and his voluntary resignation as city manager. And so I just would like to say the following in regards to that. The press release was intended to reassure San Carlos residents that our city government would maintain a steady course during change that is taking place in City Hall. My point was that the resignation of Mr. Garvey should not be pessimistic, pessimistically construed as a sign of trouble or instability, but should instead be optim optimistically viewed as an opportunity to reevaluate where we are and where we want to go. Somewhat relates to what we did tonight with those interviews. My press release uh, stated that I was not surprised at Mr. Garvey's decision and that after more than 17 years of public service to San Carlos, he had a fair opportunity to accomplish his goals. And of course, uh, Mr. Garvey's record speaks for itself. I applaud Mr. Garvey for making the decision that he did and believe that it presents new and exciting opportunities both for him and his successor. I anticipate a smooth transition, and as I said in the press release, I appreciate that Mr. Garvey was attentive to wrapping up loose ends, and I gave as an example the choosing of our new police chief who's in the audience tonight before announcing his own departure. Mr. Garvey has announced that he plans to seek uh, new employment or greener pastures in the private sector. I wish him well, and thank him for his years of public service to the city of San Carlos. 
Okay, thank you, Matt. Um, next item on the agenda tonight is the approval of the consent calendar. Consent calendar items are considered to be routine in nature and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless members of the council, staff, or public request specific items to be removed for separate action. Uh, do any of my fellow council members wish to pull an item? I have a number of items, uh, E, F, uh, H, and uh, I. With H, did you want to pull that or you just wanted to register a no vote? Oh, did I say H? I'm sorry. Uh, no, I do not want to pull H. I just want to register a no vote on it. Okay. Tom? No. Anyone else? Is there any, of, any member of staff that wishes to pull anything? No, Madam Mayor. Anyone from the public? <coughs> Madam Mayor, I'd move the consent calendar uh, A through D, a G, H, and J, and H is the adoption of the ordinance 1355 adopting a plan of development purpose, purposes of, for the purpose of constructing approximately 30,000 square foot building for office and light use industrial at 800 Britton Avenue. Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Christine, would you call the question, please? <coughs> Councilmember King? Yes. Councilmember Davis? Yes. Councilmember Eaton? Yes. Councilmember Grocott? Yes, and again with a no vote on item H. And Mayor Teagle Doherty? Yes. Okay, 6E, Matt. Thank you. Uh, I, this is the acceptance, uh, of the, the consent calendar item E is acceptance of annual financial reports for the city of San Carlos and uh, the redevelopment agency. Uh, and my question uh, only has to do with the report on the city of San Carlos. Um, I did take note when I was reading through this that we had a number of areas where we were over budget. Um, they were in the public works department, uh, public safety, community development, and uh, let me see, I think there was another one. Um, in finance and city clerk, and in the city manager's office, if I did not say that already. So my, my question is, it does say in the report on page 63 that expenditures that exceed appropriations at the fund level must be approved by city council, and it, it lists the different areas. And um, I particularly, I don't know, I'd, I'd put it to the rest of my council members, if we might want to have a closer look at some of these areas where we were over budget. Um, and for me, the per I have particular concern with areas where we have consultants um, in public works and in finance where we've gone over budget to look a little more closely at what those areas are and what the causes are. Um, and perhaps at the other areas as well because, as you know, tonight we're going to be looking at budget adjustments, and it talks about one of the things you mentioned, Richard, in, in that is that we, we uh, you, you usually forecast conservatively in terms of revenues and then are a little liberal in expenditures with the hopes that um, uh, revenues come in stronger and expenditures are not quite as high, and then you end up with somewhat of a, a surplus, if you will. So. My, again, my question is if, if we might look closer at some of these. Perhaps, uh, Richard, would you like to um, first speak to the um, the process by which we spend more than the budget allows? Could you sp um, speak louder? You're another one of those Andreas that needs to project. <laughs> I'm sorry.
پدرها when you were doing so well Uh, the process that we use for approving over expenditures is that after the budget adjustment process, we come back in June with our estimates of expenditures and we ask the council to approve those, expen- those estimates as well as approving the next year's budget and in, a se- in the case of a second year budget, approve adjustments to the two year budget. So there is a process for council to approve our estimates. Uh, there is, uh, I think if you look uh, more deeply into the financial reports, you'll see that revenue more than offsets expenditure costs, but we welcome whatever direction the council would like to make as far as uh, a, more, a closer look at those departments of concern to Council Member Grocott. May, may I ask a follow-on question? Actually, I was interested on, on page seven, the change in net assets from this year, uh, last year to the year prior was um, close to $4 million. Is that right? I mean, up in the positive, $4 million. Um, it ch- it s- changed from right. a 130 million, 537, 630, and again, I'm on page seven, right. to 134 million, 214,905 dollars. So um, is that just strictly from the increase in property values of the city's assets, or is that actually from additional revenue sources? That's primarily from our investment in capital projects. Industrial Road added considerably to our overall assets. And our assets that are not land itself are depreciating every year, but when you, the whole purpose of this GASB 34 restatement of our financial reports is to, to give the council and the public a sense of how we're doing. Are we improving our asset uh, base or are we uh, going down? And as long as we're making those kind of investments like we've been making in prior years, we will continue to improve at a, at a rate that outstrips the depreciation. The problem that we come into in lean time is like we've been in uh, for four years now and foresee for the next couple of years uh, is that we're not able to in invest like we've been investing. Uh, I don't know that we can continue to be successful in getting grants such as the $3 million we got for the Industrial Road Project. That's, that's not on the horizon as it was in the past because there was more federal money to go around and there was city match and there's a decreasing amount of both. Okay. And then one follow-on question to that. Does the, um, the net assets um, does that affect our ability or our bondable rating so that it, we can look at getting money more inexpensively out in the bond market, for example? Uh, that, that certainly reflects well. That's one of the considerations is what, are we improving our financial health, and it appears that we are improving that health. Okay. Matt, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't quite finished. Matt, can I, yeah. before you yeah. leave that, because you highlighted on page 63 that the problem is we got this on, some of us got it late Sunday, and we didn't get a chance, but um, uh, the comment that I would make, if you go on to page 65, the, the thing I think that is fair to, we can go over each line item. If you actually look at the public works budget, it's really the garage was the, was the major offender or major uh, over expenditure. If you look at public safety, uh, it's the police patrol. Uh, and if you look at um, the third one was community development, it's really building and planning. We're going to talk about a couple of those tonight uh, where the objective is to cover the cost. Our objective isn't to make revenue. Our objective is to cover the, the allocated cost, right, Richard? I mean, That's correct. So I would suggest that, that one look specifically at a, a document like this. I assume you're talking about the, the city's financial statement, not the, not the redevelopment. Right. Because yeah. they're both items, right? Right. But if you look further on page 65 and, and look at it in a, in a larger scheme, uh, our revenues exceeded our expenditures by uh, 886000 This is pre-transfers, right, Richard? I'm looking on page 65. Of the that is pre-transfers, right. correct. So that's really what I look. I mean, fundamentally, are we spending – uh, the amount of money we're bringing in without making these transfers, without the transfers, which is the subsequent item, and the answer to that is yes. And, and as Richard said, it's a combination of either increasing revenues or decreasing costs. And you can go to each line item and argue about one line item over another, but some of them are in- interactive, and uh, y- you 
you know, we, we are able, particularly on the revenue side, it's been unfair because we've had such a, um, an adjunct of the state coming in and not just taking one item, but they've come in and take, took property tax, flipped the VLF, put it into property. So now you're really, we're getting a skewed kind of, of revenue um, anticipation, right? Make, makes it very difficult to project. Yeah, because it's not just we could isolate property, our property value is going up, we're getting part of our property tax revenue, well, they, they've switched it around. So what I think we have to do in this particular year of, of the budget is to look at the over, I mean, are we spending more than we're bringing in in that given year? Um, I, I just wanted to make sure I understood one of the things that you said. Uh, on the columns we have here, we have original, which is the original budget, I am presuming, and then the final, and then actual. And final was our budget adjustment. Mid-year. That's correct. Mid-year. And then actual is where the spending actually came in at. That's correct. Is that right? So you said we, you, you talked about that process, I believe, and you said we are involved in that process. And in some of these instances, even after making the final or that adjustment, then the expenditures still came in uh, greater than what we uh, had adjusted for. Let me rephrase so, um, so that perhaps I'm a little clearer. The mid-year adjustment uh, cycle is something that council weighs in on. They make, they give us their direction. They give us specific uh, actions to take to adjust the budget. When the council when the council was presented the proposed budget for the next year, they are also looking at estimates for the current year. In other words, when you saw the 0405, 0506 budget, you are also looking at estimates for 0304. The council ap approves or amends that proposed budget for the next year and also is approving our estimates for the current year. We could, we could administratively move money between departments and make them all look good or make them all look bad. Uh, but what we try to do is keep the expenditures where they belong in their home departments so that we have a true picture of what it costs to operate that. So hopefully we can learn from that and make better budget estimates in the future. Uh, other than, rather than do another adjustment, ask council to approve moving money between departments, we leave it where it is, where, we th where it should be, uh, according to where the expenditures are occurring. But council member Eaton is correct. We don't spread our cost over all of the um, uh, s administrative costs are not spread over all the direct service providers, such as police or, or, uh, or planning, uh, the finance, HR, all those budgets are uh, self-contained. They're not shared by all the departments. So I, I don't know if that makes more sense yeah. or less sense, but. Well, no, it does. Um, I guess what I'm looking for, Richard, is, you know, I've served on boards before where we, uh, where I look at budgets and approve budgets and so forth and give direction to the staff about, you know, where we want things to go. And now maybe it's because it's a smaller organization and so you, you tend to be a little bit more um, involved. But in those cases, uh, often what we would get, what I would get as a board member is um, you might look at last year as you suggested and say, okay, you know, here's where we were. And so we're going to use last year's as an example of what we're going to spend for the next year. And if something was, especially if something's, uh, you know, out of kilter or over budget, at least talking about and informing, you know, as a board member, I would get information about why we were over budget. Either it's an aberration because in this case, you know, we've been doing the conference for a number of years. I'm just giving an example. You know, we've been doing the conference for a number of years and we always use the same signs, whereas this year we got new signs and new promotional materials. It's a one-time thing, won't happen again. I look at these numbers and I'm, I see overages, but I have no idea why. And so that's what I'm looking for is a little more detail on, you know, why are these departments, after we gave mid-year budget direction, and it still came in over budget. Well, why is that? And what should we be looking at in the future? Yeah. Or was it just, you know, corp guard, the, a building? Is it an aberration? Two, two uh, possible suggestions that might, might be helpful to the council. 
One is page 12 of the CAFR gives a, a, a very high level uh, explanation for about four or five of the major uh, overages. Um, but another suggestion will be with our new system uh, that we are in the process of implementing now, it may be helpful for the council to see the expenditures and revenues of the department's uh, budget to actual so that they can s then see the net subsidy and whether that subsidy has changed. In other words, if a department uh, such as planning uh, or recreation uh, overexpended their expenditure side, but you also saw that revenue increased proportionally, uh, if not a little bit more, then perhaps that would ameliorate some of the concern mm -hmm. that, that expenditures were unexplained, that they were just that you could see that they were justified in raising revenues uh, that more than offset those expenditures. That may be a helpful way to go, and that should that information should be available um, in the next few months, I hope. Uh, it's been a long process, but that information will be available monthly. Okay, well, that's helpful to know for the future. I have one um, more question on page 82. Uh, I was looking at the actual, um, this is the Measure A uh, funds, and the actual uh, deficit on Measure A was 95,316, and um, I had thought it was going to be somewhere around 72, and we'd moved general fund monies over to zero that out. So we we have since uh, corrected uh, the. There was a, there were two mistakes uh, on revenue side. Uh, Thirty thousand dollars of revenue was credited to the general fund that should not have been credited to the general fund. It should have been credited to uh, uh, Measure A uh, for the Scoop program as well as I believe it was twenty three or twenty five thousand uh, dollars was not was occurred in a, a different fiscal year but belonged to that same oh uh, three oh four expenditure item so <coughs> the net reduction I believe Beth if you can correct me was uh, the net deficit was in the forty six thousand range um, rather than the 95 figure that you see there. But we are providing, staff is providing and doing research now to explain that 46, and we'll be coming back to the council. So you'll give us an update yes. on page 82, essentially? Yes. Okay. So right. it's 30 and 25? I'm sorry? 30, 30, and 30 and 23, I thought you said. How much of the adjustment? Oh, uh, I believe it was just under 30 and... <coughs> Thirty-nine thousand plus twenty thousand, so a fifty-nine thousand uh, drop from that uh, ninety-five thousand. Leaves deficit. about thirty-six. Okay. All right. So we'll wait to hear it, get an amendment back yes. from staff on our measure. We a we have to do a, a, a separate a financial set of financial reports for Measure A, and that will be presented to council. Uh, I hope at the next meeting we're doing research to fully explain that. All right, well, with that, I'll move of acceptance of this report. That's 6E? Uh, that is... Consent calendar 6E. Consent calendar 6E. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Christine? Councilmember Grofa? Uh, yes. Councilmember Davis? Yes. Councilmember Eaton? Yes. Councilmember King? Yes. Mayor Teagle Doherty? Yes. F. F. Um, this has to do with the uh, award of contract right. for the Arguello Park Phase 1 project. And actually, um, I did want to note also that I had received an inquiry from a citizen and gotten a response from staff, and all of you and the citizen who sat in our audience did receive a copy of that response. So. Thank you. Um, on item F is, uh, just for the public, It's this is the Arguello Park Phase one project, and it's recommending that uh, we award a contract to Robert A. Botham, Inc. of San Jose in the amount of $1.4 million um, and allocate an additional $100,000 from Fund 27 to the project. My question is on the uh, 
the amount, the 1.4, it's a little bit over 1.4 million, but on the 1.4, where, where were things the last time we went through this process and received uh, bids and we rejected them? Um, repeat that again, please. Where was what? Well, we, we received bids before and we rejected them. So where was the amount at that time compared to where we are now? I'd have to check records, but um, the budget amount is 1.45 or whatever. I think it came in at 1.6. It was definitely higher. And neither firm was really qualified for the job. Okay, great. And then um, on the back page, it, under budget impact, it, it uh, talks about an additional 100,000 is required to cover the estimated cost of contingencies and architect services during construction. And then it says staff will perform inspection and contract administration. Is that city staff or who, who is that that's gonna do the uh, inspection and contract administration? Um, I would have to defer that question to Parviz, who as you know, at home still ill. Uh, but it, it's, it's his department, the public works department that will perform inspection and contract administration. So I, are we going to do some kind of contract with Mactari Engineering or are we going to do this uh, through Don Gilbert and other city staff who are actually employees or do we not know? Again, I'll, I would have to get back to the council on that. Uh, well I don't know how public works would handle that. Can I, um, is it a safe assumption that if in the staff report it says $100,000 is required to cover contingencies and architect services that by um, allocating the additional $100,000, which this resolution asks us to do, we specify that the $100,000 is for those two items and that it's not for um, additional staff time or a contract with, uh, I assume your con um, concern yeah, is with having a contract with Mactari Engineering. And so that the, the $100,000 isn't allocated towards that, because that's not, I mean, clearly it's a staff and it doesn't say, you know, an additional contract of $20,000 is going to be required for oversight on this. If that's the council's pleasure, yes. Okay, and I'm seeing our city attorney over there nodding as well that. Well, from the information in the staff report, um, I think that would be appropriate direction. Uh, it, is, it assumes that the con construction management is not included in the overall million. Uh, four, four, million four, five, four. actually. Mm -hmm. It might be. We don't have that detail. Well, I'm not ready to move on this until we get clarification myself. I, I don't know. Now, how much would that hurt to wait two weeks? Does it hurt? Um, it, it could. It could incur uh, some financial penalties with the uh, co contractor that was selected because you have X amount of days to give them the uh, begin work order. And if you extend beyond that, then there are financial penalties the city would pay. Okay. Barry, are you comfortable that whoever does the inspections is going to do that for uh, not only professionally but for a, an efficient amount? Uh, yes, I am. And it maybe shouldn't matter in my mind. Okay. Well, Don, would you like and to therefore move? I would like to move, move? Uh, consent calendar item 6F. Okay. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Um, Christine, call the question, please. Councilmember Eaton? Yes. Councilmember King? Yes. Councilmember Davis? Yes. Councilmember Grocott? No. And Mayor Teagle Doherty? Yes. Okay, last one. 6I, which is authorizing the issuance of a request for proposal for professional auditing services. Okay. Um, on this one, I have just the question on. Uh, I have two questions. One is, uh, and by the way, just so folks understand, this is to essentially do the same. Richard, do you have that report with you? I'm sorry? Mine's all bound up. At this one? Yes. That. Thank you, Inga. Uh, what we're talking about is a contract to uh, have somebody do these auditing reports. For That's us, correct. Right? And in the past, we did a contract that was five years, but it was delineated that it would be a three-year contract with two one-year options. That's, that's correct. Correct. And now what we're looking at is something similar but not the same. We're looking at the contract period for this engagement to be three years with an option to extend for two years thereafter. So it's a little different. And I just wanted to, is that what we intended? Do we want to do the same as we did in the past or change in this thing? And if so, why? Uh, 
the, um, the, the process that we went through last time um, was, um, how do I say it, it, it was uh, co somewhat contentious uh, in that there was a differing view on uh, who we should award to and for how long. And so uh, excuse what me, contention with whom? Contention within the, the group that was reviewing the uh, and interviewing the, the finalist for audit services, the firms. And we went with a three-year uh, agreement with two one-year extensions. We exercised one of those one-year extensions. And rather than go back uh, and ask the council for a second uh, extension, uh, we thought it best to do the RFP. We, we do not feel, actually, uh, my own preference would be that it be a five-year agreement uh, rather than a three-year. But three years is a shorter time span, and council expressed some concern that we might get too far out of the market um, and we wanted a fresh look or, f or, or a more recent competitive bid. I think that if we got to the end of that two, three year period and we uh, looked at the market um, and evaluated what others had done, then we could better determine whether it's worth going back out on a competitive bid or wh whether we're within market and we will be within market for the next two years. So rather than go through a, a full review and uh, council consideration and council approval for that second year, we're recommending that it be uh, a two-step process, award for three years and then award for, for award an extension for two years if that it, if staff's recommendation is to award for two years. We just don't feel like there's enough gain by renewing two different times. Actually, uh, I remember we had this item three or four years ago brought up the issue that uh, my view was it, uh, I thought changing even at five years was, was inappropriate. But you said GASB 34 required now these. Uh, actually, actually it's, it's not GASB 34. It's, it's more uh, as, as opposed to the, to the private sector. The public sector uh, does change auditors. Uh, Sometimes agencies don't for many years, and we didn't for about 10 years. We had the same auditor. My belief is that we should get a fresh set of eyes looking at least every 10 years and not go beyond that because my own experience in other public agencies is when you have an auditor for a long time, you don't get the comments back. You don't get the scrutiny that you need. Uh, when you change firms, we changed firms in another agency and had 27 comments. 27 comments is a, is a whole lot when we had zero for, for at least five or ten years before that. So I think it's worth getting that fresh set, fresh perspective. There's so many changes with GASB, not just 34, but many other changes that we need up-to-date uh, professional uh, firm looking at our books and looking at our process and making sure that we have the internal controls in, in place. Uh, on this question, if you don't mind, um, I notice our city treasurer is in the audience. If he would like to weigh in on this, I'd like to hear from him. I'm Michael Galvin, the city treasurer. Uh, I concur with Richard. Um, it really comes down, boils down to a comfort level. You're looking at three years, and we have a fairly good feeling on how the auditors work with the staff and their product. It's more of a quality control review of the product. And if, in fact, um, conditions exist and we're satisfied, um, it's very comfortable to continue for two additional years. Instead of, as Richard indicated, if we went with the traditional method, we had to come back for to council for approval each, each year. And also, it tends to make the auditors kind of uneasy and um, quite possibly get uh, less senior auditors and a uh, less quality work um, when there's an um, uncertainty of how much time is going to extend. Um, so I'll, the end result is, you know, I'm quite comfortable with this. And as Richard said, um, you really need to hold that three years as a carrot to the to the various CPA firms to in, ensure quality and as he indicated the um, number of exceptions or potential exceptions that need to be reviewed 
um, is very helpful. Okay, thank you. I have a couple more questions here. Um, on page four of the report, it says that uh, the RGS and LGS executive director contracts with the city of San Carlos and South Bay Side Waste Management Authority to serve as the finance director. And I'm not sure uh, the way that's worded, it makes it sound as though it personally uh, contracts with. And I think what it <coughs> means, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that RGS and LGS as entities contract with these authorities, and we may want to clean up that language before yeah. we make this a final draft. You, you are correct. We are contracting between agencies and not individuals. Okay, so we might want to take a look at that sentence okay, and you. straighten it out. Um, and then the last question I have is it mentions right underneath that in the next paragraph, the financial activities of these entities are included in the scope of the audit, and it's speaking of uh, South Bayside Waste Management Authority uh, and CCAG, and is there another one in here? I think that's just, that's it. Um, and my question is, I can understand why we'd want to know what they're doing with their finances because we're partners with them, if you will, but I don't understand, it seems to me it's an expense to do this work, so why are we paying for an audit of these other agencies? Don't they do their own audits? Or maybe it's just a sort of a, a a review of an audit that's done by, that they have done, in which case I don't have a problem with it, but if we're spending a lot of time auditing them or looking at their books, I can understand, again, wanting to know that they're financially stable and so forth, but, you know, why should we pay for that? That's probably another example where we need to clean up the language a little bit because the intent okay. there is to say that we provide the financial services and therefore have our auditors uh, audit those books as well but those entities pay for their own audits. So they are, they are so not our partner. They are not our partner. How would you we like provide We provide service to, C I can only speak to CCAG, yeah. and we provide a service, and that uh, auditing bill is scrutinized uh, rather assiduously by other cities. And I, as past chairman and a possible cur current chairman, I'm saying, you guys do it at, at a price you think is better. That, that we do not pay, San Carlos does not pay a nickel for this. They pass its costs on through yeah, to the CCAG, through. and I believe South Bay Management Waste has got the same system. And we've had numerous volunteer cities saying we can do it cheaper, we do it, and they always come back to the same agency. So, right. Okay, so you're saying we need to clean up the language because our nickel doesn't pay for these audits. It, it does not. But and, it's, and I want but to make it clear, the there, there's no services. partnership involved here. We're just a service we provide and we reimburse. But just to be clear, it is under the scope of services of this RFP. However, it, it may be broken out. The costs may, may need to be broken out as pass-through costs. We, we ask the auditors to break out the costs, yeah. both in their proposals as well as when they submit their bills. Uh, they break that cost out between the entities so that each entity is charged for its services. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. With that, I would move approval of item 6I. 6I. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Christine? Councilmember Grocott? Yes. Councilmember King? Yes. Councilmember Davis? Yes. Councilmember Eaton? Yes. Mayor Teagle Doherty? Yes. Okay. Next item on our agenda tonight is one of my least favorite. It's uh, authorizing the 2004 2005 mid year budget adjustments. And we did have um, a brief staff report um, with options to. Uh, looking to look at cutting $450,000 as well as potentially an option for additional 96,000. Richard, are you going to do the brief staff report on this? Okay, thank you. Um, I, I will do my best to make it brief. Um, the Just uh, smile when you're giving us the bad news. Well, actually, it's, it's better than I would have thought uh, a couple of months ago, uh, considerably better. And uh, so I'll get into a little bit of why it's better, and, but why we're still uh, recommending the reduction in options that, that you see before you tonight. Uh, property tax revenue is up uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, the price and the turnover is still high. The uh, ERAF refund, which... Uh, you, you know about is uh, it's a one time it's a, it is our second year of it but 
uh, we cannot count on that as an ongoing revenue source. VLF, uh, through the adjustments that were mentioned earlier, uh, with their uh, converting that into property tax uh, effectively, um, but we do expect a $100,000 increase on that. Budget and plan, I mean, building and plan check uh, revenues are running ahead of schedule. And uh, real property transfers, again, driven by uh, the turnover in residential properties is up $75,000. I, I uh, want everyone to remember that $847,000 number because it's gonna come back uh, in just a moment. The, on the expenditure side, at this point, we're not recommending anything other than the ERAF three uh, adjustment that was approved by the voters uh, with 1A back in November, uh, $454,000 this year and the following year. The, if you look at the revenue increases that we're projecting and the expenditure decrease for ERAF 3, we're up almost $400,000 over what we had budgeted. What we had budgeted, though, showed that our fund balance target of $2 million would not be achieved by the end of the second year of this two-year budget. We would only be at $100,000. The average savings uh, range anywhere from $800,000 to $1 million a year. So you would think that we could achieve those savings uh, in the next uh, two, over the next two-year cycle. Um, and I think that our revenue increase of $847,000 shows that that, that average estimate of 800,000 to a million dollars net savings per year is not an unrealistic number at all, although it's getting more and more difficult as, as the squeeze on revenues and expenditures extends and as we continue to cut the budget. Um, and then the ERAP impact $908,000 in the next two years. So normal savings would, could get us there. If nothing else changed and we didn't have the ERAP, we could get at the two, $2 million uh, target range by the end of 06, fiscal year 06. But we know that we've got $900,000 worth of state cuts. And so the, there's an uphill climb there that we would be counting on the economy to pull us out. And uh, at this point, we don't feel comfortable in projecting those revenues to increase by that much. Along with the fact that we have reserves to restore when the council appropriated for the uh, adjustment or the, the uh, median cuts for uh, El Camino. We have capital budgets to do that we, we have had to cut back on because the funding just simply wasn't there over the last few years. Uh, so why we're suggesting uh, the 450 uh, reduction options at this time even though the picture looks fine for this year, is it will not look fine by the, by the time we get to June 30, 06. Rather than cut that too close and then count on the economy to, to turn around dramatically, we are recommending this time that the council approve reduction options totaling $450,000. The specifics are in the staff report. We're also recommending that the council uh, direct staff to prepare longer term, ongoing uh, restructuring of $450,000 cuts for 06, and we're asking that council consider using up to $900,000 of the uh, reserve for economic uncertainties should we not be able to achieve the revenue growth uh, that we hope for and the expenditure uh, reductions that we hope for in the next two years. Uh, the, I won't repeat the, uh, all the options that you have before you, but there are uh, 19 or so of the, on the recommended list and uh, several that I've amended uh, since you got the report for clarification and for new information that we've gotten that I'll have hen highlighted in just a moment. The first being the uh, planning director's hours was on the or original list as an additional option beyond the $450,000. We had combined that with the planning net revenue increase. Uh, we brought that 17,500 from the optional list back up to the 12,000 that we had for the planning net revenues. 
and just rounded it up to $30,000 that we expect the net uh, benefit from the planning department. On the uh, police PST position, we had misstated that, and the correct state would be converting that full-time PST to a part-time position. Uh, that we should save $40,000 for the remainder of this fiscal year, and that a lot of that savings is because we hired that person late uh, in the fiscal year in November. So it's still 40. I'm sorry. Is it 40? 40,000. 40,000 remains a good number. I'm just restating that it was a conversion from full-time to part-time, and it is a filled position at this point. It is not, as I stated in the staff report, an unfilled position. Was that person hired under the understanding that it would be a full-time position? Yes, yes, they were. Okay. And then the last change from what uh, you have in your general report is the countywide administrative uh, reductions. I said countywide, excuse me, citywide. Uh, administrative reductions, uh, I lowered that by the amount that we increased the planning departments. Uh, and the reason I lowered that rather than going over on the 450 is because the 62,000 that was originally there, I felt uh, was going to be a stretch. Those are uh, oftentimes like uh, office supplies, uh, uh, just normal operating expenditures. I would feel more comfortable by taking these structural changes that you have before you rather than cutting the wherewithal of the departments to do normal business operations. And then we have uh, the one change in the uh, additional options for council consideration should, should the council so choose. Uh, this is a re replacement of the planning director's hours. Once we move that up to the uh, recommended options, uh, we move that 17,500 down to the uh, to the additional options. That Thank you, Richard. Report. Are there questions? So, for I, so we c you moved from, I'm looking at the page six, our, our staff report, Richard. Okay. But you call it, you, you linked the planning budget and the planning director's hours together, the 12 and the 17.5, and rounded them up to, to uh, 40. 30,000 dollars. I'm sorry, 30. 30 and then you substituted uh, the admin for the replacement of the planning director's hours as a, uh, an option should we want to flip-flop something. That's correct. Okay. And, and then the part-time, that's 11, the delayed hiring of the PST position to part-time is filled, right? That's correct. So you took the 40 out of that? That, that number stays the same, right. $40,000 $40, we estimate savings, and we would uh, implement, implement that uh, as soon as practical, uh, but it would be yeah. if that position were not converted to, position? I'm sorry? By not filling another position? Or? No, that we would convert that position to a part-time position, oh, okay. okay. so we'd have additional savings. We've saved most of that $40,000 already uh, just because we fill the position uh, five months into the year. And then we would save an additional amount up to that $40,000 by converting to a part-time. So, Madam Mayor, yes. in the interest of time, then, for you, you want us, Richard, you just want us to comment on items 1 through 19 or, or substitute them with the 6 below or the now recently modified additional options? Uh, that the preference would be that the council approve the recommended list as amended tonight. Okay. Uh, however, the options, the additional options are for council substitution, as you noted. Well, rather than go through these line item by line item, does anyone yeah. have any issue with any of these? Um, and let's take them. Just Tom, which ones do you have an issue with? I have an issue with uh, a concept. Uh, I think it's a well done list and everyone's taking a bit of it and doing their part. but. We are looking two years ahead. We're looking at the uh, economic contingency fund as a balancing factor. We're trying to reach it. Got a whole lot of unknowns in front of us. And I think for the most part, we need to do this. But I really hate to rupture public programs or public programs, programs that have high public value in the process of anticipating um, the worst. So I would suggest we take a look at number one restore it. It's only $3,500 and allows us to do a better job if we give a family and a youth job. 
that we restored number two, ten thousand dollars. We spent a ton of money on on our uh, internet and our video productions, and we've gotten the public into the program. I don't think we ought to rupture that uh, at this point. I think we ought to continue with number twenty. It's code enforcement. Twenty. Twenty. There is no twenty. No twenty. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, number, no, number one. 20. Number twenty is code enforcement for the city attorney. Sorry, that's number one under the additional options. One? Okay. If we're looking at the I'm summary list. At a list. But I think we ought to maintain that. We have enough problems with, with uh, abatements. We have sidewalk problems. We have abandoned car problems. We got you name it. And I don't think that we, we should put the face out there for our public that these are of limited concern to us and we'll get around to when we can. And then the final one that I've kind of got mixed emotions on is number 24. Um, we all know what value the concert and park has. We've been talking for a number of years about doing a stage. I don't think we need to budget 20,000 for the stage, but I think we need to budget excess funds from the function to the stage so that uh, as money is, <coughs> is developed and raised as a part of the, uh, of the sponsorship programs, that that money can be set aside and impounded, if you will, so that over time, perhaps a few years, there's enough money in there I also have a belief that there are people out there that are willing to contribute to this, this process because of the value to, to the community. So I would suggest those high profile public issues uh, be, be reconsidered. Okay. Matt? So, wait, oh, wait, I'm before sorry. we leave that, so uh, may I get this straight how we're, how we're doing this? The, the uh, optional ones aren't in there, Tom. The one through six, I'm looking at the last page. Uh, Not unless we approve them. Well, so I, what you've thought on what? So I mean, what what staffs are recommending is one through 19, and so your the first two, the 3,500 and the 10,000, um, are in Richard's budget, yeah, but the 20,000 for the for the stage and the 3,500 for the attorneys' code enforcement are so future. As long as we continue, then we need to come up with the 450, and I suggest that if. if so the two you pointed out, we got to find another 13.5 someplace. That's what I think Richard. Or, or trust the process. We were, we're looking at a balancing function downstream. I don't know that we have to be right on dollar. Uh, so uh, just for clarification, so Tom, you would be in favor with the exceptions of the ones you pointed out, um, looking at the reductions, including the additional options for net savings, which actually may get us to more than $450,000. Uh, yes, I have no objection to moving ahead with the additional options uh, other than number one and number uh, yeah, Right, two. exactly. Okay. Number one and one or five. Number one and five down here. One and five down here. Yeah. Okay, so Matt, did you have any? Yeah, I did. Um, in fact, I have a question first on the item 10. I'm on the same table on page six. Do not fill two vacant public safety positions until 706. Um, I'm going back to this report we received, this one, Sandra, that says police patrol, we were over budget. And I'm wondering how much, and we're $194,500 over budget, how much of that is overtime? Because if we're not going to, it seems to me that, uh, and my question is, you know, if we don't fill that position, then it, the onus is on officers to work overtime. So how much of this 194000 is overtime? Are we cutting off our noses to spite our faces? Chief, do you want to respond to that? I'll comment in general on the overtime. We don't have, I don't have the overtime numbers for, um, <coughs> excuse me, for that year. Um, but what's in the report and what's included is if we do reduce staffing, there does, the possibility does exist that we could incur an increase of overtime by reducing staffing levels. Um, and uh, there could be uncertainty associated with that. If we have an injury on patrol or a protracted illness on patrol, those could drive overtime costs. Um, if we cut staffing and don't incur those things, we may not have the overtime costs going up. But I think it's outlined in the report that with the reduction in staffing, we could incur in increased overtime costs. Okay. Matt, you're assuming so that the 194501 from last year's budget is all overtime. Or no, I'm not assuming uh, that. I asked the question. Okay. Because yeah. my suspicion is it's retirement benefits would be my guess. Well, I mean, there, there's a... You know, all we see is expenditures versus right. revenue. We it could be. I have no explanation. Yeah. That's why I asked the question. So I guess um, 
and just in terms of priority, I don't know, to me, our job as a city, job one is public safety. Uh, and I'm not for holding back uh, hiring police officers if that's what we need. Uh, I suppose I would offer a compromise that maybe we save 61.5 and hire one and not hire the other. But, and, and I, the way I look at this, Ingo, is that we're, we're kind of horse trading. If, if we're gonna take something up here right. Right. and fund it, then we need to find something down here to pay for it. And, and my answer was to let's, let's fund these police officers and, and then take all these options down here. Or compromise and fund one, at least one police officer. And actually that is such an expensive item, it's 123,000. Uh, we might do one and not the other and still have to do these down here. And then the, the only other one that I had a, uh, a struggle with was reducing the professional engineering hours because that slows up projects. And that to me hurts us in the long run because if you slow up projects, then uh, you know generally what, what this is about is somebody brings in a set of plans and they wanna rehab a building or, or something like that in town to put in a business or whatever. As soon as they do that, that thing goes online as uh, new new property tax assessment. So the, if we slow up that process, we also slow up the, the opportunity for that money to come in the door, for businesses to be there, for sales tax, for a lot of other things. So I, I didn't care for that one too much. Well, can we clear, is professional engineering for public works or for building? Uh, public works. Oh, is it for public works? Yes. Oh, well then I retract my statement, sorry. Okay. So you're only on for 61, huh? 61.5. 61.5, yeah, as a compromise, sure. Don? Uh, my comments are very much along the lines of Tom's in terms of trying to uh, figure out perspective here. What we as a city council try to do when we budget monies, how we try to benefit the citizens, how we try to provide programs, how we try to make our government work, work more efficiently. Uh, in the case of the ones that Tom noted, those are the ones that I was gonna note also. Uh, where we've got, in terms of items one through 19 anyway, we've got 13.5. My, su my suggestion would be that uh, items, uh, between items 11, 13, 14, 15, and 16, there's about $140,000 worth of, of monies that we're saving by delaying for a period of time. Uh, it seems to me that an additional month delay for any one of them or a couple weeks delay, you can mix all that up and that more than pays the 13.5 and that's a fairly easy thing to do since you're delaying the hiring of somebody anyway and someone else is making do for a period of a month or two or three or whatever that period is, they can certainly make do for another week or two or three. So you wanna- hmm? So you're talking about delaying my assumption is for um, 13 through 16, it's talking about delaying the hiring of staff specifically within our Parks and Recs Department. That would be delaying it through the end of this fiscal year so That's that the positions would come open again come July 1st of 2005. Well, what I'm saying is, and I what don't you're care saying where it is comes from. Keep it open or delay it through the beginning and of let August the chips 1st. fall where they may because if you give somebody a starting date of June 1st, you say, well, potentially you plan on, all right, maybe, maybe we're gonna get a starting date of July 1st. What, what's the difference really, so to speak? Oh, okay. I'm so saying you think you can pick up the extra 13.5? I mean, maybe, maybe just somebody says, well, gee, I can't. You planned on them starting June 1st, but guess what? They can't start till June, June 15th anyway. Well, fine, roll that into the budget. You're probably gonna save that much to cover what- Well, Tom you know, property taxes will say. probably go up too. What? By that amount, property taxes, we could probably slide on the 13.5. The, Never this, the yeah. savings numbers that you see up beside 11 through 15, 11 through 16, are through the end of the year. So that assumes the position stays vacant through the end of the through the, the end, end of the of fiscal fiscal year. Fiscal yeah, year. June 30th. June 30th. Right. Okay. Okay. So how much? 13. No, he's he's suggesting eliminating one and two, 13.5 from the top. Yes. Correct. Yes, and then I'm do you have any eliminate one and two from the cut list. Do you have right. any feeling about the uh, public safety position, restoring one of those in, uh, in anticipation of taking advantage of the additional options that we were offered for net savings? Let me think about it a minute. Okay, Mike? Um, well, I, 
I'm for uh, 1 through 19, but but a couple of, well, I'm sorry, I'll take it back. Uh, not because Richard's making the presentation. I don't see that we cut back on finance at this stage uh, with the changes to GASB and some of the finance issues that we have and the current problems that we're having with the new system. To have you cut back your hours um, bothers me. The new computer system. The new computer system. We, for, for the record, we haven't seen reports for, you know, months, and, I, and I, all of it, the first thing I saw was we're knocking off 12000 bucks because we want to cut your hours back. We may never get a financial statement this year. <laughs> no, <laughs> rhetorical. The areas that I would uh, propose uh, cutting back are the leadership positions that the staff has taken in, for instance, uh, the California Society of Municipal Finance Officers. I've been on their board for the last year. That requires some time. I'm the city representative in the organization, okay. the lead city right, representative. I would, I would I've taken myself off the board as of uh, last week. So that frees up some time. The, pe the okay, photovoltaic. You answered, you answered the second one I had was eight and, and Tom's calling 23. Or the, you've linked a planning director and a planning budget revenues. Uh, I thought at the last budgetary meeting we talked about raising these revenues to cover the cost. Is that correct? So I mean, That's it correct. should be break even. I mean, so there shouldn't be any, any allocated. These are revenue increases, not cost increases. Th these are cost decreases. Sorry. These are net revenue increases. Right. Okay. So we will have some expenditure. We may have some expenditure increases as we right. uh, provide services, but they will. At which least leads me to my the next one, which was really down to is in the option one is actually directed to the city attorney. Can we not? Bill those enforcement hours that that the, the for code enforcements to the um, violator. Stucky. <laughs> to the violator. For the violator. That's better. Uh, the violator. Uh, we do, as a matter of fact. Well, then uh, there wouldn't in each be. instance where, uh, mostly in instances where we take first board, right. someone who hasn't complied with the 15 letters from the building department or the one or two letters that are sent out from our office before we, um, but if it is resolved after one letter from our office, they go back to the building department and decide they'd rather do it that way than go through our office, I don't believe those are built at that point. But see, that's not a major that. I'd rather anyway. see the enforcement, you know, continue so we don't get behind, but, but just add those to the bill to the, to the, to the violator. I mean, I, in fact, I thought that's the way we talked about it at the last meeting. Same issue with the planning department where we said if, if an additional project comes in, yeah. we're going to bill that. You know, we're not in it to make money. We're in it to cover the cost of the additional either planning or legal services provided. Liz? If, if I could, through the uh, mayor, there, there's the issue of the citywide fee study that will be conducted that the council acted on at their last meeting, I believe, and that could be something that we could perhaps look at is what we are looking at very comprehensively is complete cost recovery, and perhaps the city attorney's time could be considered in that as well. Okay. Then okay. two other ones, uh, 13, delay hiring volunteer coordinator. Uh, it's nice to have, I mean, I think we just drop it completely. Uh, it's nice to have, I mean, if there's volunteer coordinator, it's nice luxury, but volunteer coordinator of what? Oh, park and rec, huh? <laughs> Keep in mind, volunteers are free bodies doing well, things that otherwise paid staff may have to do. we're saying delay hiring, you're hiring a volunteer, that's why I said, wait a minute, it's a kind of oxymoron there. Uh, we uh, have in the budget hiring a volunteer coordinator to facilitate all the coordinators that are used by the city, and the city uses a lot of volunteers, specifically, m primarily in Parks and Recreation. I know police also uses them, but they are, are used in other departments also. Also, we use this much like Week of the Family. We facilitate for the community, uh, particularly uh, community service hours for the uh, children in the schools, as well as senior citizens who want to volunteer to stay independent, stay active in the community. And it, like anything, it takes time to coordinate all those and follow up. Currently, we have Mr. Pat Leeper, who is a volunteer, volunteer coordinator. He doesn't get paid, but he only works about four hours a week. So he's been able to set up infrastructure, uh, but there's not enough time to follow up like a true volunteer coordinator would be. We believe that once the economy improves and we are able to fund this position, that we will leverage the dollars spent on that position to bring additional resources to, to San Carlos in the form of volunteer hours. And this is probably a line item that we could be looking at when 
our, the next full budget comes to us um, for consideration. But at this point, the recommendation is to delay the hiring of this position should we yeah, what I was just choose saying, to have it, just, you know, to we don't get do rid of it altogether. Justifies, that's, forget just delaying. I mean, just, sorry, we have to make tough decisions, but just, to me, it just didn't make sense that we're hiring a volunteer coordinator. I've got two other comments, Ms. Madam Mayor. Uh, one is on, well, I'll call it, item two in the second list where we talked about any, or it's proposed that potentially building fees could be increased to cover full costs that should have been done anyway it seems to me uh, if those are truly passed or is it, to, it seems to be like it's more a matter of timing than anything else actually i i disagree because i i remember at the meeting that we had building came in and said some of the fees were actually lower than the cost of providing services because we wanted to incent the public to get the permits for it seems to me like water heater replacements. Right. Um, right. It, 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 the cost of providing the right. services actually is much higher than, than the actual fee that we're charging. And again, it's, it's because we, we, we don't want to make it prohibitively expensive <coughs> for people to get the permits because then they do it illegally or they do it without permits. And then we have- I've uh, had my memory refreshed. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The second one was uh, we could probably save $4,000 just by delaying the replacement of the floor in the community rooms upstairs. I mean. Last time I was up there, I mean, they may have some spots on them, but I think they're serviceable carpets still probably. What are you talking about, the library? The yeah. flooring in the yeah. library community yeah. room, right. number so six. That's 15 grand right there for nickel and dime in it. Well, he's recommending that we use all of these. <laughs> we go for the 450. No, no. The 450 and then the 96 is additional on top of that. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. It's for horse trading. Yeah, we're horse trading. To give us options. Right. Right. And what, the way I'm looking at it, this is I've added the two together, 596, and it, we've all got, I got Tom down for 37 and Matt for 61 and you for 13. You know, how do we get, he wants us to walk away with 450, right? Right. That's correct. That's Matt's horse trading, and I agree That's with That's correct. That. It doesn't have to be 450, but somewhere close to that. Yeah. Uh, or more would or be more okay. Now, or Mike, less would be okay. Well, I don't know. I, 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 well, I, Mike, did you have other things that you want to? Well, I'll the 17.5, I'm assuming, was is in, but I'm just saying we ought to, it ought to end permanently till it justifies its place. I mean, these delay hiring of, of some of these positions. And a kind of the final one I had was um, the CSO position, the delay hiring of one CSO position currently vacant. It's just that we, we leave it open until, you know, until there is a justifiable need. I don't think there is, and I'm looking at the chief and Sandra down there, the, we delay these things, but to me, that you have to have a justifiable reason to bring them in. Delaying it, this is just to the fiscal year end, June 30, right, Richard? Yes. And I'm saying we could, we could get the savings. I'm, I'm for all of them, 450 and the 96, and then we subtract what everybody's little pet little project is here. But yeah. I. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Could well, I let me let me just. Could I make an observation on where we started this meeting with our $50,000 visioning program? Is that something we really need to do now, and would that be an offset for what we're seeing on the board? In other words, is that in the budget, and is that something that uh, could come off the budget if we chose to do so? We do not have, uh, currently we do not have an appropriation for that full amount, no. And we probably don't have an appropriation for the city manager's recruitment either. Uh, we do, I believe, have, have that sufficiently it budgeted. Is, it is our, covered in the budget. Okay. So it's not in the budget and we don't have a source of funds at this point for the visioning program. The visioning program yeah. Not all of it. We, we have identified some funding sources from various places we cobbled together, uh, but we do not have the full amount yet. Well, can I weigh in? I mean, I'm, I'm with Tom and Don. I think we should um, keep in the Week of the Family and the Video Productions um, art line items one and two. I think that's uh, thirteen thousand five hundred dollars, probably well spent in um, connecting and building community. Um, in terms of the um, number eleven, um, actually number ten, the two vacant public safety positions, I actually would love to continue to see this deferred, with direction to the chief that you continue to monitor overtime and if the overtime hours start to become excessive or someone goes out or is, is injured or is sick, 
that it gets brought back. And in the meantime, we've been able to sort of rack up those savings. Because um, I think I think the chief, he is new on board, but I think he's, you know, he's probably got the wherewithal to, to track overtime and obviously to manage his staff. And if the recommendation came from their staff to essentially delay these two sa um, public safety positions, I think he probably also, if it was needed, come back to this council and say, you know what, we need to revisit this because of these reasons. Now, remember that with police officers, there's a lead time because they've got to go through training and before you actually get them out on the street. Right. There's, I forget what, you know, there's a few months of lead time there. Right, right. Um, the number so you of- You want to eliminate both? I would, I would keep both of them, the 123,000 on the um, on the same uh, cut, just to leave it out there as an available option to cut. Um, on 11, which is converting a full-time uh, public safety, I don't know, PST, what's a PST? Uh, police services technician. technician. Police service technician to part-time. I feel like, you know, if we've hired somebody under the um, intention of them being a full-time position and then you turn around a month later or however long later and you say, guess what, the council's just cut you to part-time. First of all, the $40,000, the majority of that money's already been saved because of the delay in hiring of that position. So the additional savings may be, what, 10000 15000 Somewhere in that range. And so I think just from an employee morale standpoint, I'd rather keep that person at full time because they may be actually able to help cover with some of the public safety positions that we're leaving open. And then um, I agree that the city attorney code enforcement hours, we should get those entirely passed through if possible. Um, I think we should um, continue to delay the hiring. But I think in terms of the um, the stage and the flooring, rather than deleting those, I think we should defer them. I mean, we've been very successful, I think, in terms of conservative um, fiscal management by deferring projects until there's money that's made available. And I think by deferring them, they stay on the list of desirable things to have done, but we haven't cut them all together. Um, because if there's extra money at the end of the year or when we go through this next year's budget cycle, um, if Parks and Rec still thinks that those are priorities in order to either raise revenue because we can rent those rooms at a higher price or, or we can you know, somehow get some money to offset the concert and the park stage, I think that would be wonderful. But um, I'm in favor of deferring rather than deleting projects. So I would- For the full fiscal year? In order to get the, the benefit. remainder of yeah, the fiscal year. Yeah, for the remainder of the fiscal year. Well, I mean, it's it's not the remainder well, of the fiscal year. It's, we're, you know, it's it's a capital type of uh, improvement or a capital expenditure. So if you buy a new stage, it's $20,000, whether you do it in this fiscal year or next fiscal year. And we've deferred quite a few capital projects, including, you know, imp new microphones and uh, things for this chamber to try to improve communication. So. This council has a history of deferring capital improvements until the money, um, or the financial picture looks a little bit better. So th those would be my uh, my comments. I'm gonna chip in again on the police because um, the thing that I've noticed reading the papers, and this is just, you know, I don't have any statistics for this or anything like that, but I have s seen, uh, a plethora of stories about uh, people driving around in cars and scoping out houses where people aren't home and trying to break in or breaking into automobiles or breaking into businesses. Uh, we're seeing more and more of this on the peninsula and up and down the, uh, the cities on the peninsula. And that concerns me. And again, I'm gonna come back and say, you know, that the, the things, when I, when I look at what a city does and what a government does, the things that you do without, that aren't luxuries, are police, fire, and keeping up your infrastructure. And everything beyond that, including the fine job that Barry does with parks and recs, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, we all love to go to the parks and, and so forth, but it's all icing on the cake. Meat and potatoes, right. And so I'm really concerned about holding off so on So you these, want one, these, is that you still? I would at least like one, because I, I, would, I would pick up on what Don said, it takes time to train, it takes time to hire, 
and find these uh, personnel. And so at least I'd like, like to have well, Richard, can, or Madam Mayor, can I suggest a Yeah, uh, absolutely. We use 546 as our number. That's the 450 and the 96. Okay. And then we had this sort of unanimity to, to keep one and two in there. Uh, so 13.5. 13 uh, 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 any other, and Tom wanted the, you wanted the, uh, the stage, huh? Well, I'd no. like to, uh, I'll be willing to delay it. I, I don't think we ought to delete it. Okay. And I, and I, and I would encourage Barry to look for alternatives okay. in terms of funding it. Uh, well, we talked about the 3,500, which is the city attorney code enforcement. Keeping well, that's in there. That it's in. in. It's no, in. but you've got to subtract it out. No, it's in. I'm saying take if you take 450 and 96, <coughs> you get to 546. No, I understand. But, you start subtracting but we said that we wanted to keep the city attorney's code enforcement hours. But he was going to pass them on in the form, that just like we did the okay. planning. If he could. If he Sometimes could. Sometimes he can't. Okay. All right, so we take it out. That's 17. 17. 17. And I'm kind of with Matt. I'd, I'd maybe like to, I mean, uh, Sandra and Greg are both here. Is there any kind of, can you give us some feedback on uh, staffing uh, for, you know, the impact that this delay of uh, uh, hiring a Greg, you'll have to come up to the microphone so people can hear. Uh, I'm sorry, you wanted to know what the impact would be of the delay of hiring well, the two officers? Saying, you know, we're talking about delaying, to fill, not filling two vacancies. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'd say this, that if we decided to move forward with filling one of those vacancies, that the earliest that that could occur, given uh, the process of, uh, of recruitment, interviewing, chief's interview, background investigation, the potential of a candidate washout and have to bring back another candidate, looks like around June 1st, so um, we would still realize a good portion of those savings um, if, we, if we ramped up, so I want to say that about that, about the figure. Um, you know, it's hard to say about what the impact of that will be. I, one, of the, one of the things that we are certain of is it certainly can decrease flexibility in the police department if we do have sicknesses, injuries, or shortage because we have less bodies to pull from. Um, but I will say that the staff during the budget uh, process um, reviewed the workload situation of the police department thoroughly, discussed it at staff, um, and discussed uh, what we felt would be the best options to bring forward and to contribute uh, to, to the budget process. And um, we felt while it's never optimal to reduce police officers, that we could, in fact, be able to do that, um, uh, you know, and, uh, and that was the recommendation that we felt uh, was best given the economics. Um, Chief, can I ask a a following question, which is converting this um, full-time PST position to a part-time. Do you have any uh, feeling about that? Um, I think you were right when you said that the majority of the savings have been realized already, and that if we don't, uh, the vast majority of them. And um, so if we don't uh, convert, I don't think that we'll, we'll be having to add back the entire $40,000. Again, it's, it's a similar process. You know, the, uh, the city's facing a shortfall. As you know, the police department is a big user of general fund revenues, and we had to, um, and, and so there has to be some, some cuts and some things brought forward. Um, staff reviewed them all and felt that that was uh, um, the most palatable of the suggestions, because we've been through rounds of cut before. We've cut the operational expenses, and we're getting lean, and we're getting into personnel issues. So. Um, uh, I guess that's a long way of saying that you were accurate in your assessment about the realization of the savings, most of them having been occurred already. So if we didn't convert this um, PST, the, the savings is already there, but the actual net difference would be more like $10,000. I agree with that. I think that's probably about right. Okay. And with this uh, PST position, can they do um, – backfill some of the other two positions that are that are open at this point more than for example a CSO uh, PSTs are generally doing more than CSOs or different duties and different tasks than CSOs right um, so whether or not we've um, really fully looked at shifting their responsibilities to pick up some of the CSO work I'm not sure the pay grades are different um, the expertise of a PST is higher than a CSO. Well, actually, I meant for the um, public safety positions that you have open. <coughs> so, for example, those two positions that you have open at a savings of 123,000, um, 
by keeping a PST at full time rather than part time, are you able to shift some of the administrative types of duties or paperwork or anything like that over? Yes, that is the purpose of a PST and a CSO, is to be able to um, take what are administrative or lower level tasks that are com commonly done by sworn officers making more money and shift those to non-sworn personnel making less money. So as long as we have uh, those types of non-sworn personnel on staff, they're able to do some of those duties. Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor? Yes. So I, I, as you were asking those questions, I put some figures together. And it seems to me by what the Chief said, we're not going to save 40000 anyways. Maybe we save twenty. Um, Thirty. Okay. They've already been saved. So it's already been saved. But uh, instead of taking the 40 out of here, I took just 20, if you know what I'm saying. So anyways, I took that, and I took the 61.5, which is one officer, and the 13.5 from the top here, and you end up with about 93.5. You subtract that from Mike's 546. You've got 452, right. 500. We're real close to where we want to be. And adding to the chief's comment that even if he starts the process, you're not going to have an officer in place until uh, sometime after the end of the budget year anyway, so you're going to have uh, seen even a little bit more savings. seems to me we'd be about where we want to be. Even if you go ahead and hire somebody right now and start that you process, start. Yeah, yeah. Start the you process. got the salary of one month worth of yes. one officer. Well, we've just taken half. Well, actually, the no, if you look, it says it's delaying it into, until 706, so, so 2006, so not 2005. So this is essentially delaying two officers for an entire calendar year. 18 months. Of 05. I'm months. sorry, I didn't pick that up. You're right. Yeah. Plus. I, I'd like to weigh in and I'd like. I, oh, wait, I hold on. Richard's coming. Is that a typo? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear all the question. Is the number 10, which is not filling the two vacant public safety positions until July of 2006, the correct date? No. Should be 2005. 2005. Okay. Okay. No. Then my comment stands. You only so save in a month. Okay, but I still think. Uh, 123 <coughs> is basically almost already saved because even if you went out to start recruiting tomorrow, then. It's a, it sounds like the lead time is almost as bad as a city manager. <laughs> About the same. Okay. Um, but one thing I would like sure to mention, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I would like to mention with respect to going forward with that recruitment is it would uh, then um, not necessarily negate that as an option for budget cutting for next fiscal year, but it would certainly be difficult to ramp up and hire and then have to reconsider and lay off a public safety officer. So I would just uh, lay that out there for consideration. Um, it will reduce flexibility in terms of what we can do at the police department next fiscal year without having to hire someone and then turn around and lay that same person off if, if uh, a policy decision was made by the council to do that next year. I guess just to add on to the chief's comments, I, th I think all of these we have to think about the fact that the finance director is recommending that we come back to you in June with another $450,000 worth of cuts on top of this. Now we're hoping that through potential retirements and reorganizations at the city that we'll be able to cover some of that next 450 through that process. But uh, I, th I think Greg's point is well taken. Uh, you know, you may see some of these options again, so you need to proceed with that in mind. Okay, so the objective here, Madam Mayor, is 450. And I think I, I got 451, Matt, so we're both, if you take Tom's uh, top two hit parades, one and two, uh, leave half of, of uh, 10 in there, the public safety, just take one vacant position. And I use the same thing. I use the net of 20,000 for, for item 11. You still get 451,000. Well, no, actually, if you take the 40,000, 30,000 of the 40,000 has already been saved. <coughs> So you're actually looking at bumping at only 10, 10, leaving the 40 in, but getting an increase of 10. I just, I just would ask my council members. It seems to me that the chief is is arguing fairly strongly for deferring these two positions until June, when he might have a better idea. Um, it's it's his department. I would. 
say that if something's going to change between now and June, when it comes back to us in June, that those positions will be recommended to be filled. And I think that we may look at other broader areas where we might be able to find cuts, um, perhaps in, you know, God forbid, Parks and Rec or, you know, some other type of overhead at that point. But if the, if the chief's sitting here saying he'd rather not have those in, it seems like, you know, maybe we ought to at least give him the benefit of the doubt through June let him get a better sense of what his department can do and how many people he actually needs filled and then look at it in our next fiscal years in the full budget. Uh, right. Madam Mayor, if I might add a, a comment on to uh, what the Assistant City Manager said. As far as the timing, um, I think that June might be a little optimistic. My, my hope and the, uh, the recommendation in this report is that you direct us to save, develop plans for $450,000. But I think that some of those plans, because we want them to be structural, ongoing plans, I think that we will need to, to complete the fiscal year and come back either in the fall or mid-year process to, to confirm what we have for the council in terms of plans for restructuring, reorganizing based on uh, retirements, resignations. Okay. And I, I would like to comment on that. Um, I know the chief is deferring to us in a way that surprises me, actually, um, and that's, but it's fine. I'm simply saying I don't want to shut him down. If he, he, he is deferring to us and he's saying, yeah, I could wait till June and I could start it then. I don't want to shut him down, though. If, if in the meantime, between, you know, because we have, before we even get to 705, we've got, where we're are not we going to see this in June. We're, we're not, Rich, you're just saying we're, we may well, see Well, no, this Mike, I'm saying between, between now and 705, if we're right. saying to him tonight, don't even think about it until after 705. I want to say to him, no, think about it. Think about that one position. If you need it, I want to give you permission to go ahead with it. You know your department better than I do, certainly, but I want to open up that option for you. I don't want to shut it down. That's all I'm saying. It's very common, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but with a department the size of our police department, there are always going to be some kind of turnover. And there's, there's kind of a constant recruiting process, kind of. Uh, and to that end, if, if the chief feels that there's a need, I mean, you don't want to overstaff because that costs us too much money. But on the other hand, you don't want to be burdened with too much overtime either. And recognizing that historically, either there's, there's injuries, there's people get another job, they, they move on, they do whatever, they quit. I mean, that's, that's life in a police department, I think. And so to be kind of constantly recruiting which would speak for Matt's point of at least go ahead and, and go try to you know, start hiring at least one person right now, mm -hmm. whether that person gets hired June 1st or July 1st or August 1st or whenever, um, that's probably fine because of the normal course of what happens in a police department. The way okay. I look at it. Madam Mayor, I would suggest that for the, in the interest of time that we... Uh, Do you want to make a motion? I want to make a motion that okay. we take the two items, one and two, that's the 13-5. And remove them from uh, From the, the, the cut cuts. list. Uh, I'm for this half uh, Matt's proposal on the police force because I, I agree with you. It's easy. It's the easiest thing when you're doing a budget is these positions are open. Just keep them open because it's harmless. But I, I mean, it's the wrong message, the wrong time to do that. So leave one of them in there. So the one, the one twenty, the number ten would go down to sixty-one five. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about converting the uh, part-time, the full-time to part-time? I used the forty that. Uh, I don't know what you want to use 11 for. I had I had put it in for 20, but I'll reduce it to 10,000 because you said you've used up 30. Well, 000. actually, it's like 30,000 has already been saved, right? Yeah. Correct. So we'll keep it at 30. Roughly. Okay. And that was it. And yeah. so that that stays at full time. Okay. And what about um, the code enforcement for the city attorney? Do you want to well, remove that from cuts or leave no, that in? Leave it in, because he's gonna. Okay going to bill for uh, those on on individual enforcements and tag them on to the I mean if it's if it's acceptable I think it's just a rephrasing yeah I think it's a restatement of recover full costs is I think what the okay. council member King's saying so not a savings but a revenue so the Correct. attorney's office will become right. suddenly a revenue generating revenue generating got it what a revolutionary <laughs> idea okay so it's been moved and seconded Christine would you like to call the question please yes Councilmember Grocott? Yes. Councilmember Davis? Yes. 
Council Member Eaton? Yes. Mayor Tegel Doherty? Yes. Okay, last but not least, again, we have public comment. Um, again, this is, uh, each speaker is limited to two minutes to speak on anything that is not on the posted agenda. So, is Horst? Uh, name and city of residence, please. The time when you would have had to speak on the no, consent calendar. That's why, excuse me, that's why I'm asking the question. If it's too late for that, forget it. Otherwise. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's too late. Well, in that case, I make a general comment. Um, Horst Jung, 52 Coronado. When, when we just go to this struggle, this financial struggle, it actually surprises me how generous we are, for example, on the park issue. We are $100,000 for construction management, just like that. Seems to me the existing staff could well deal with that additional management deal. And why do we have to allocate $100,000 potentially? Doesn't mean it's gonna be spent, but why do we so casually approve that? And we're talking about uh, $10,000 for stage and stuff like that. Why do we approve $100,000? Now, I don't buy, buy Gary's argument about the financial cost. If a contract is awarded $1.4 million and it says, wait another two weeks, he's not gonna say, I'm gonna punish you financially. That's, that's not likely to happen. He's gonna get the contract anyway. So why are we so generous in that issue? And here we're hiring about 10,000 bucks and 20,000 bucks. When money is so tight, it seems the council should take a little more care on that and, and say, 100,000 bucks, yeah, okay. It's not okay. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else from the public here who wishes to speak during public comment? Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you.